My name is Meta Anwar Westander, and I'm the founder of Disabled Students UK, an advocacy group dedicated to spreading disabled students' insight into accessibility in higher education with the aim of improving policy. Let me do a quick sensory description. I'm a white young person with an accent that's a mix of Swedish, American, and British. I'm very excited to have been invited to speak at this important event about the current situation for disabled students in higher education and to situate this in its historical context. The proportion of higher education students who have declared a disability is steadily increasing, having doubled since 2010. Today, almost one in five students from the UK declare a disability. This increase is partially related to increased access to higher education and increased recognition of neurodiversity. However, it's also related to an increase in debilitating mental health conditions among young people. 5% of students now declare a mental health disability. As a disabled student myself, I have faced inaccessibility at university. In 2019, those of us who made up the Disabled Students Network at my old university created a report evidencing the issues experienced by disabled students there. Unfortunately, I was ultimately forced to drop out of this master's. However, the report became widely spread and I started being contacted by disabled students at other universities. With time, it became clear to me that my experience of inaccessibility wasn't university specific. Realizing this, I called a meeting with students from all over the UK, and together we created Disabled Students UK. DSUK quickly became the largest disabled student-led organization in the UK, with students from over 70 universities. The organization put lived experience and an evidence-based approach at the heart of our mission to improve accessibility. Our 2020 report, which warned the sector about the impact of the pandemic on disabled students, was mentioned in Parliament. Our 2022 report, Going Back is Not Choice, laid out five key lessons from the pandemic for how a university can become more accessible, and it was hailed as a potential game changer. We've spoken at the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Disability, at the Cambridge Union, and delivered the Advanced HE Conference keynote. Recognized for our data-driven and collaborative approach, DSUK has thrice been named one of the most influential disabled-led organizations in the UK, winning the category in 2023. Our organization stands on the shoulders of giants, basing our activism on the laws that were hard-earned by the historic UK disability rights movement. First, the Disability Discrimination Act in 1995, then the 2001 Senda, which extended these rights into higher education, and finally the 2020, 2010 Equality Act, which we rely on today. A turning point in our student activism came when we discovered the guidance produced by the Equality and Human Rights Commission on how the Equality Act applies to higher education. Before then, we had a sense that the treatment we were experiencing wasn't okay, but we didn't really understand our rights. When we found that guidance, suddenly we had a standard that we could hold universities against. Those rights are the legacy of many people in this room, something I'm incredibly grateful for. The progress made over the years has resulted in a new generation of disabled people. The next generation is majority neurodivergent and mentally ill. Most of us have what's sometimes called invisible disabilities. A good proportion of our community are also international students or second generation Brits. Because of our diversity, DSUK takes inspiration from the American disability justice movement as well in making interdependence and intersectionality core to our organizing. This also means being open to different ways of thinking. While DSUK as an organization holds on to disability as an identity, our community contains a rich diversity in how people identify. This year, DSUK conducted the largest survey of disabled students' experiences in higher education, with input from more than 1,300 disabled students. The project 
The project, named Access Insights, found that on the one hand, the disability rights movement has resulted in big improvements for many disabled students. Of those students who had disclosed their disability to their university, 90% reported that they had the opportunity to speak with a disability advisor, something that would have been unthinkable 25 years ago. At the same time, our survey results show that in many ways, the law is not being enforced. Despite the right to access their education on equal terms with their non-disabled peers, only 35% of our students actually state that they have the support and adjustments needed to do so. Taking strength from the rich history of the disability rights movement, DSUK is now looking toward the future. This year, we put together 10-year goals for the sector, built on six principles for the disabled student experience. We believe that disabled students should encounter universal design and an inclusive culture at their university, that their path to support should have as few barriers as possible and should lead students to have sufficient and effective adjustments, that students should have somewhere to turn when issues inevitably arise, and that they should have equal non-academic opportunities at universities, such as social and career opportunities. Let's focus in quickly on one of these principles, having sufficient adjustments. We know that disabled students should receive all reasonable adjustments needed to enable them to access their degree on equal terms with their non-disabled peers. In order for this to happen, disabled students need four things. To be told about different possible adjustments so that they know what to ask for. To have the adjustments they ask for agreed to have the agreed adjustments implemented, and finally, they need the implemented adjustments to be effective. Today, only 8% of declared disabled students answer yes to all of these questions. We want to see this increase. To us, it seems that the higher education sector lacks three things. Insight into the disabled student experience, knowledge of the standards to measure this experience against, and accountability. We try to provide all three things through our new website, accessinsights.co.uk. Today, we're releasing new pages on the website, allowing you to explore the statistics demonstrating the current disabled student experience, explore our 10-year goals, and to compare different universities against each other. The full 2023 report will be released in two weeks on November 29th. We hope that by making these resources available, we will encourage universities to improve their accessibility policies and encourage oversight bodies to enforce standards for the sector. Our project will run for 10 years, and I hope that when I return for the launch of Disability History Month 2033, I will be able to report an improved situation for disabled students in higher education.